Before and after, the doctored picture of suffragette Evelyn Monesta credit, crown copyright, courtesy of the National Archives. They are two images which starkly illustrates the bitter physical struggle that took place between the suffragettes and the representatives of a state that would deny women the vote. When the militant campaigner Evelyn Monesta was photographed by Paulus at London's Holloway Prison a warder had to grip her arms behind her back to stop her struggling and hold her head in an upright position to face the camera. When this now rarely seen photograph was distributed the presence of the warder was edited out, leaving the image of Monesta standing on her own. In what was an early example of image manipulation the forces of law and order simply made themselves invisible, possibly so as not to detract from the effectiveness of the picture in identifying the suffragette. These two contrasting photographs are part of a new exhibition of contemporary documents and images at the National Archives, in Q, showing the lengths the suffragettes were willing to go to and the response from the state. Cover of the suffragette newspaper from January 1913 showing one of the campaigners for the vote being force-fed by prison officials credit, crown copyright, courtesy of the National Archives Monesta had been arrested on April 13, 1913, after smashing the glass 13 of the most valuable paintings on display at Manchester Art Gallery. Police photographed her in order to distribute her image to other museums, such as the National Gallery and the Wallace Collection, so that staff could spot her in case she tried to stage another attack. Minesta was not going to allow herself to be photographed without a struggle, forcing one of the warders to hold her in place. In a final act of defiance the suffragette keeps her eyes firmly shut. The idea of editing out the presence of the warder came from the photographer. In his report the prison governor stated, The photographer informs me that he can easily print out the matron's arms round Manesta's neck, should it be considered desirable to do so, they were required in order to prevent her holding her head down. The National Archives' new exhibition, Suffragettes vs. The state explores our unrivaled collection of suffrage documents, showing the lengths suffragettes were willing to go to for the vote and the response from the state. Catherine Fox, modern domestic records specialist at the National Archives, said, This is one of the photographs that really shows the interaction between the suffragettes and the state. It is the sharp end of the struggle for the vote. Minesta was obviously struggling and resisting the attempt to photograph her and she had to be physically restrained. But when it came to distributing the photograph they edited out the arms of the officer restraining her. Some of the earliest use of surveillance photos and fingerprinting by police was developed in response to the growing militancy and effectiveness of the suffragettes campaign. The authorities began to utilize new technologies, such as photography, to record and disseminate information, said Ms. Fox. Some of these strategies included using new lenses to take surveillance photographs of suffragette prisoners, and editing photos to remove arms that were restraining the women. Ernestine Mills lying prone on the ground outside Parliament after clashing with a police officer during Bloody Friday, while her husband Dr. Herbert Mills tries to intervene credit, crown copyright, courtesy of the National Archives The Exhibition, which marks the centenary of some women being allowed to vote for the first time, also includes documents seized in raids on suffragette headquarters, statements made in police stations and use in trials, and prison reports. Among the material also on show is a little-known photograph of the suffragette Ernestine Mills lying prone on the ground outside Parliament after clashing with a police officer during what became known as Bloody Friday, in November 1910. Trying to intervene on her behalf is her husband Dr. Herbert Mills, one of many men prepared to support the cause. Suffragettes vs. The state runs at the National Archives in Kew, southwest London, until Friday, the 26th of October. Entry is free.